be about being here and now. <coughs> We've seen how technology is kind of a tsunami on us all of a sudden. And this speech will demonstrate how technology has consumed our lives. From the minute we walk up until the time we go to sleep, we need to recognize that the more we are plugged, the more we are plugged in, the more we are tuned out. The end goal is to persuade the audience that stepping away from technology, even in small dosages, can, can connect us even more than before. So the objective is to persuade listeners to adopt to Elaine's uh, viewpoint, appeal to the audience's interest, and use logic and emotion to support her position, and maybe avoid using words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, fellow Toastmasters and guests. So, what I would like to start with is telling you a little bit about what I've been doing the past couple of years. I recently went back to school for my master's degree in communication. And one of our first assignments is to take a look at social media and how it affects our lives. We were instructed to do an assignment to watch a TED Talk video that was given by a woman named Sherry Turkle, who is a, uh, a psychologist of social studies uh, and, and sciences. And she took, took a look at the way we use technology today. And she had some epiphanies. Those epiphanies turned into my epiphanies. So I wanted to share some of those things with you. Before I get into the way I use technology, I want to tell you a little some facts about how we use technology in the United States. 70% of adults have at least one social, social media app on their devices. 70% of adults check their personal email or that social networking site within an hour of getting up in the morning. 61% regularly sleep with their phone either on next to them or under their pillows. 51% of adults check their smartphones for personal email as well as social media while they're on vacation. Okay, so this is, if this sounds like anything to you or resonates with any of you, <laughs> then you're in the right place tonight. So Sherry Turkle, over 16 years, has interviewed many young people and found that the devices that we carry with us, specifically smartphones, are, not, are so powerful psychologically that they're not just changing what we do, they change who we are. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that. She says, people can't get enough of each other, but as long as it's from a distance. She calls it the Goldilocks effect. Not too much, not too little, just right. She had a conversation with an 18 year old boy and he said to her, someday, someday, just not today, I would like to learn how to have a conversation. This really stuck with me because I have a 13 year old. And it made me think about the way I use technology, the way he uses technology, and the way my husband uses technology. So let me paint the picture for you what a typical day looks like for me. Do the usual, getting up in the morning. Now I don't check my phone right away, I will tell you that. I go through the whole morning routine to get ready for work. I go to try to wake up my son. I come back downstairs, get breakfast ready, try to go wake him up again. So finally when he gets up and comes downstairs and turns on the te television to watch his YouTube videos, I sit at the kitchen table <clears throat> and I flip through Facebook while I'm eating breakfast, because what else am I gonna do while he's watching his YouTube videos? We get him to school, I get to work, I check my emails. Throughout the day, I find myself picking up my phone quite often. Sometimes it's not for anything important at all. It's to check social media, to check a text message, to check my personal email, while I'm sitting in front of my computer at work checking more email. The day goes on, and I can't even tell you how many times I pick up my phone. It's very often I can tell you that. When I get home, it doesn't get turned off there. 
So although I just came from work, I find myself checking my work phone now for email again. And while I finally turn that off, probably around 5.30 or 6 in the evening, I still have my smartphone, but I also have my tablet. So once again, I am scrolling through Facebook, I am checking email, huge wastes of time, I find. Finally, we get to settle down. My husband and I are both sitting on the couch. He's on one end, I'm on the other, and the television is on. And we are what Sherry Turkle calls alone but together. So although we're sitting together in the same room, we are face in phone on social media. So doing this assignment had me thinking more and more about the effects that social media and our phones have on us on a daily basis. I think about my son and how he'll probably never have that feeling of turning the page of a book slowly and not being able to concentrate because he's so excited as to what's to come next. When instead, all he's got to do if he has to read a book or wants to read a book is just scroll through his cell phone and get to the good parts really quickly. He'll never know what it's like to excitedly go to a movie theater to see that movie on the big screen with buckets of popcorn with his friends because he can watch that movie on his cell phone. So all the things that I got to enjoy as a child, he probably never will because of technology. Now don't get me wrong, technology is not a bad thing and that's not what I'm here to tell you. Technology is great for those people who utilize FaceTime for relatives that live far away and don't get to see them often. Uh, it's also great for social media for the same reason. If you have friends and family that you don't get to talk too much, you can see, catch up with them on social media by looking at their pictures and their posts. So my message here today is not we need to completely turn off because that's unrealistic. But what we do have control over is how much we are invested in using that social media. We need to create sacred spaces in our homes where we can shut it off, where we can put down the technology and reclaim the conversation. There is a time and a place for technology, but as human beings, we need to be smarter than technology and know when to put it down. 